Welcome. Today we celebrate Jesus' baptism, and we will be doing communion. Prilled is what feast will you bring? Friday Worship, 119.24, 1 1.30 p.m., 11 a.m. Connecticut.
And this is the upcoming schedule. And of course, All right. The 24th, March 24th, 20th, and 31st, those are, that's Holy Week. And March 12th, that will be Lent 5, and then later it will be, there will be a special service to receive the call to worship. Oh, and once again, good afternoon, once again, everybody. Welcome back to Lebanon. From the wires of creation, the earth sprang forth. From the wires of a womb, God's blessed Son was given to us. From the wires of a river, people were baptized and marched as God's children. Praise be to God, whose loving gifts and presence have called us together. Let us shout our love to God for God's abundant love. Amen. And Please rise and see me our opening hymn, My Savior's Love, 348. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he can love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my son shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own grief, but sweat drops of blood for none. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my son shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. In pity, angels beheld him and came from the world of light. To comfort him in the sorrow he bore for my soul that night. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my soul shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful, is my Savior's love for you. He took my sins and my sorrows, he made them his very own. 
He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my son shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. He went with the rest of the glory, his face I am glad shall be. They'll be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Lord, this afternoon we come before you on a very snowy day. You watch over us, offering us light and hope. Be with us this day as we hear the story of your baptism. Help us to remember your healing, cleansing, and claiming love for us. Remind us again of the many ways in which, in which you reach out to us. May the image of the water be for us an image of hope. Bring us closer to you, loving God, and the ones we want to reunite with. Embrace us again with your love. As we lift your name on high, this day and every day, we open our hearts to you today. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high, 107. Hmm. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. All right, thank you. Please be seated. Excuse me, Lord. Faithful witness. 
as I will be. And the offertory is the miracle of bread. And as usual, it's an opportunity to subscribe to continue to check out some of these other videos we've been working on as well. This video is sponsored by the Boston Terrier Club on Facebook. You want a new doormat with get yours at Boston Terrier Group on Facebook with all the different sayings that they might be thinking when you walk in the door. But in the meantime, the offertory is the miracle of bread.
Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father. And to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. It is through this tale that the miracle of bread was upon us. And now as we think about your baptism, may it be a reminder for us. And as we look ahead to the spring semester, and as you make, make yourself known throughout the world, and as we continue to reunite with the one we want to be with, for we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so the reading today is is Matthew 3, 13 to 17, and we're going to talk about how baptism is baptism and how it relates to our lives. After the scholars were gone, God's angels showed up again in Joseph's dream and commanded, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Stay until further notice. Herod is on the hunt for this child. He wants to kill him. Joseph obeyed. He got up, took the child and his mother under covers of darkness. They were out of town and well on their way by daylight. They lived in Egypt until Herod's death. The Egyptian exile fulfilled what Hosea had preached. I called my son out of Egypt. Herod, when he realized that the scholars had tricked him, flew into a race. He commanded the murder of every little boy two years and under who lived in Bethlehem and its surrounding hills. He determined the age from information he got from the scholars. And now to Luke. Oh, I'm sorry, to Mark. All right, so we'll just look at Matthew 3. So Jesus' baptism is, is a symbol of his early life because 
at this time where he was born, they, they were under the jurisdiction that this ruler wanted every young boy to die. Because that was the answer to everything. Death. There was no rhyme or reason. It was basically like a dictatorship in Bethlehem at the time. So, his baptism tells us that we can't live like that if we want a happy life and a happy relationship with other people. Not just romantically, but just in general. And what I've done is I've added an extra slide to this presentation and actually show you what it teaches us. It teaches us obedience, it strengthens our faith, celebrates our commitment to follow Jesus, encourages accountability, start of a new life, sharing our faith with others, encourages reuniting with the one we want to be with, and encourage a new hope this year. See, this is what we are talking about. If we want a new hope with somebody, we have to show them that we want to be with them, and we have to give them an opportunity to prove to us that they can make the necessary changes. Now, throughout this time of thinking about everything, trying to put a plan together of exactly what would, what would happen in the event that a reunited would happen. Well, it's very simple. You use simple statements like if they choose to kick off and do something that you know is totally not acceptable, you basically turn around and you say to them, when you when you're ready to calm down and to talk to me, I will talk to you. But I'm not going to talk to you if you continue to act the way you are. Take 15 Put the phone down. When we're dealing with behavior like this in psychology, what we have to do is we have to put a zero tolerance for this kind of behavior. Because if we could draw the line now, then that means down the road, we can nip it in the bud straight away. Now, the whole point of baptism is... Look, it says in that list there, it shares our faith with others. Like, we know that this baptism happened, and then that leads down into what comes throughout the whole year. Now, also, if we look at this, as I talked about during Christmas, the cross has already started to form. Now, what does that mean? The cross already started to form. Was it already formed yet? anyway? Yes and no. The cross was formed as a symbol. Like, it means something. They didn't know what it meant yet. You know, here in the early readings, they didn't know what it meant. Because in Isaiah 53... You know, we read about what happened, but we don't, but we don't know who. They don't identify who the man was that got crucified. So, if we can encourage our the ones we want to be with. And celebrate our commitment to each other. In fact, the next piece of this is
if we fast forward to if we fast forward to Matthew 16 excuse me Matthew 18 down to verse verse 13 17 where it says look at it this way if someone has a hundred sheep and one of them wanders off doesn't he leave the 99 and go after the one and if he finds it doesn't he make far more over it than over the 99 who stayed put your father in heaven feels the same way he doesn't want to lose even one of these simple believers if a fellow believer hurts you, go, tell him, work it out between the two of you. If he listens, you made a friend. If he won't listen, take one or two others along, so that the presence of witness still, TV, so that the presence of witnesses will keep things honest and try again. If he still won't listen, tell the church. If he won't listen to the church, you'll have to start over from scratch. Confront him with the need for repentance and offer again God's forgiven love. Yes, this is what we've been talking about. Forgive and move on. Don't hold anything against each other. Especially in you, especially if you know in your hearts that you did not do anything wrong here. This is what his baptism teaches us. Work it out. Now, let's see. Did I do a duplicate of that other slide? Let's see. Okay. So, as I was saying, work it out. Work it out between the two people involved. Because you can't because if so, if something's really bothering you, and if you're holding on to something, you need to have a conversation with them. You need to tell them. You need to tell them how you feel. And you need to tell them that if you want to be with them, be with them. Work it out. Find a common ground. Forgive and move on. Which is a lot easier said than done. If people see the bad in you all the time, then they're not then they're not willing to give you a chance to show so you can show them who you are. And what exactly you want to do. Now. This semester. There are three goals. That I've set. One. Obtain word study. In some form of way. That's number one. Number two. Pay off mom and dad. And number three. Have a new Boston. These are three goals that can be easily met with a little perseverance and a little bit of staying focused. Now, how do we do this? Well, I spent most of the day yesterday on the phone, excuse me, through email. I reached out to the different department and just said, if you have, any, have anything that I could help you with, please let me know. Because we're going to be up there for four days instead of two, that opens up the door to having these opportunities. Because I was promised that they would help me find something and keep something. I also reached out to my old boss, to my boss in Maria. Maria at Willamette, I asked her if she could help me out. She said she would if she could, but she downgraded. She she's she's not part of that anymore. 
Because what this boils down to is to work it out. Everything works out eventually. That's normal. But what isn't normal is how is why this is dragged on for so long that all of this is like sitting here for years, it seems like. His baptism. Think about how beautiful that is. And then we jump down to Mark 1, 9 to 11. It says, At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. The moment he come, came out of the water, he saw the sky split open and God's Spirit, looking like a dove, came down on him. Along with the Spirit, a voice, You are my Son, chosen and marked by my love, pride of my life. Yes, this is exactly what we're talking about. You we gotta work things out. Everything has to be put to rest in whatever is going on in your lives, professionally or personally, everything has to be put to rest. No more back and forth, no more of this trying to blame you for things that you did not do. And third, Stick up for yourselves. Be assertive, not aggressive. Tell them straight out what you expect and what and what you are not going to tolerate anymore. As I talked about at Christmas, when I was talking about bad habits, that also led down to the discussion of why do we go hide in our room over and over again. Well, the reason why we go hide in our room is because we just, it's just because sometimes we just don't want to deal with anything. And even on days like today, you want to go out and do something. But you can't. Because you're afraid for your own safety that if you go out and do something, are you going to make it back your safety? So this is what his baptism means. It shows our obedience, our accountability, and the ability to work things out with other people. Personally and professionally. I'm going to give you an example of how I worked something out with Pastor Tom. So this message is kind of split up in three different slides, but just as a side note, this is what's going to happen now. When I do my research on a certain topic for a particular week, I actually do my outside research and then I actually take what I read and then I put it in that list form. So like if like when we get into Lent, I'm gonna review what the cross means, you know. And also I wanna look at a few other new things this year as well. So, 
We are upgrading this worship series, folks. So just a little public service announcement. Anyway, sorry, I digress. I get excited. I get excited when doing these services. So I want to talk about a situation that occurred with Pastor Tom. Now, I used to go to church. I used to. At about 12, I started going to Logan Baptist. You know, I went, you know, I thought, I thought, oh, you know, this this place is cool and whatnot, you know, whatever 12-year-olds think. But there came a time where I wasn't getting my needs met by everyone. I was, now mind you, at the time, I was in high school. I was always on the shore end of the stick. And so what happened was it would bottle up these frustrations. But finally, I finally, I finally sat down to him and was like, you know what? And was like, you know what? You have time to talk to everybody else but me. And that's not, and that was not fair. It's like, it's like, you're, it's like, why can't you take five minutes to talk? Why? Because at the time, it didn't seem like, you know, what I had to say or, you know, having conversation with them really meant anything to them. So I let it go and go and go for a while. Finally, I just snapped. And I said to him, you know what? If you can't make time for me, then I'm not going then I'm not going then I'm not going to be here. Because this also leads into the feeling that we have felt lately of being unneeded, unnecessary, and unloved. Where we feel like our needs are not being met by other people. Especially the one person that we want to be with, and the one person that actually can give us the answers to why everything happened. Now it wasn't just Pastor Tom that I that I had an issue with. I was started sitting in the choir as well. <laughs> but no, that didn't work out either. Because the music directors here are very perfect. They're perfectionists. If you say it off key, huh, you're done. And I just did not like that at all. It got to, it really got to a point of where I just felt like I was a joke. Then I started going to church in Niantic, where I was living at the time. And everything seems to seem to work out there. And actually, the pastor at that church used to pastor here. So then when my time was up, I came back, but it wasn't like anything changed. I came back and I started going to the congregational church because so I thought, well, maybe, maybe that would be something different. Oh, no. Oh, no. It was the exact same thing. So that's really where I was like, you know what? I got, it's like, you know what? I got to find a better way to talk to these people. So what I did was I actually sat down with both of them and said, look, if I can't talk to you on Sunday, you know, can we set something up during the week? 
where like if we know that if one of them is here if we know pastor tom is here monday and tuesday so we know that obviously at the time i wasn't driving yet so and obviously we know that if we know that they are around we can actually go up and have a conversation with them that isn't interrupted that isn't involved with other people that other people don't need to hear our conversation and so that's how i worked it out with him after finally being real with him and actually looking him in the eye and saying you know what this is how i feel and this is why i think this is happening And what that led to is a better relationship with them. Everything can be worked out. The moral of this story is we just got to speak up and have our needs met. If we feel that something isn't right or isn't fair, we need to step up and we need to talk to them in a normal voice. Because isn't that what we all, isn't that why we're all here? We all want to be loved and we all want to be accepted for who we are. We know we can't change who we are. We can't change that we were born with autism. We can't change that we were born with other things. We can't change that. It's just part of our makeup. But it's how we approach situations and it's how we learn to not take the aggressive pro approach and taking everything to the extreme and learning how to go about it in a mature way so this is what this is about his baptism means start new start fresh start over it's not too late to start over with the one from the summer i guarantee you that it's not it's not too late all we have to do is to get them on the on the phone and talk to them have him meet up meet up with him for lunch maybe go to a movie with him or something work it out the life gets better, guys. I guarantee you, if we can work it out with him, we won't be feeling this way anymore. Mm -mm. We won't be feeling this way anymore. And certainly going back to school on Monday will certainly help the cause as well. And we will continue to look at his baptism and we continue to look at his early life next Friday. And, this, and that's today's message. Amen. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Jesus to Calvary did go. His love for sinners to show. What he did there brought hope from
Lord, this afternoon we come before you knowing that your baptism means something to everybody. It's like we, it shows that we can work through our issues with the people we want to be with. And we can work through our own personal issues. And that we can work it out with other people. We don't have to have this back and forth, back and forth. Where we can have our needs met and to be loved by other people. We know that our needs, where when we have our needs met, we know we don't feel unloved, unnecessary, or just plain unheard. Where you have our voice, when our voices become silent. And so my prayer today is that this semester give us what we've been waiting for. Another opportunity to go back to work. Make a difference again. And give us who we've been waiting for. A new Boston. The one we want to be with. And help us reach the goals that we have set for ourselves in a strategic way. Because we don't want to feel like this anymore. We don't want to be on the short end of the stick. And that's why it was so important today to read to work it out. For all like sheep who have gotten lost. Well, there were a hundred sheep and one got away. And obviously here the one got the one sheep got away from me. Within these last few years, three of them have gone away from me. And for the viewers at home, we pause and give you the chance to lift up those that you know. And so, it's to this end, you loved each and every one of us. You gave your life for us. And now we, can, now we do the same in return. You help us work it out. And as we continue to look through your early life, that will lead into spring and whatever the rest of 2024 has in store for us. As it is in that prayer that you taught us, say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth and it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, communion him is come share the Lord. And at the end, I wanted to read an article to you. Come share the Lord. We gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the love it's Son, the Father makes us one. 
Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. No one is a stranger here. Everyone belongs. Find in our forgiveness here. We in turn forgive all wrongs. He joins us here. He breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of which the Lord is head. Though one city meets us here, in the breaking of the bread, we'll gather soon where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and come and King. Now we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. Give and forgive.
So on the night of betrayal, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And after blessing it, he said, In this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. So as often as we eat of the bread and we drink from the cup, we reminded that he is the living Christ who is alive even now in 2024 and will always come to help us work it out and how his baptism is a wonderful reminder of his life and this table is a wonderful reminder for all the things that he has done for us and what he will continue to do throughout the whole year. Let's pray. Lord, this table is a reminder of who you are and the things that you've done for us. And so now as we leave this sacred place today, may it be a reminder of who you are and what lies in store for us as we head towards the spring semester and we head into the weekend. For we ask this in your name. Amen. Now before I change the slide, I found an article. And it was talking about the hysteria of the weather. Actually, I'll save this for you next week.
Told you to hit as the deer. The deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I want to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. You alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I want to worship you. The deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I want to worship you. Alone are my strength, my shield, you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I want to worship you. And we have to actually have a closing anthem today, which is Let Me Walk You Home.
You see the better shit. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he help you work it out. And have his baptism show you that everything can be worked out in due time. And I will meet you back here next Friday for another edition of Worship. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe, like, and comment. Let us now depart in peace. Who in thy name are gathered here? This was the brightness of thy face.